it looks like some people really want HTTP3 and quick support in Node.js so bad. Someone actually donated a thousand dollar in one of the crowd sourcing uh, websites to Node.js devs in order to support that. How about we jump into it? So thank you to ARED who sent me this email. Uh, apparently they are subscribed to this website. That's called Resolve. Uh, I'm not familiar with it, but it sounds like some sort of a, of this crowdsourcing where uh, you can donate and fund projects to individual people and uh, uh, products like Node.js. So this issue says HTTP3 support was created back in July 2021. And uh, this is to bring the support of HTTP3 to Node.js, which does not exist today. Uh, now, when we think about it, uh, it makes sense for other front-end facing proxies to support HTTP3, such as Nginx, HA proxy, uh, Envoy, things like, you know, that, that, that acts like an API gateway, things like talk to the client directly. However, Node.js, uh, does not fit that criteria. It's very rare where you find Node.js publicly accessible directly to end consumer clients, being that uh, Python API calls or JavaScript or any other websites. Re really rare that we find that. Usually Node.js sits deep into the back end because of the how Swiss Army knife it is. You know, it, you can just do so much with Node.js and it's really scary to put it into the front end, you know? Uh, when I say front end, I mean the, the, uh, the edge, effectively, talking directly to the uh, clients. But some people want that. Uh, so let, let's just read through this and uh, give you my thoughts on this. So HTTP3 support, uh, this was created by Rust a lot user back in July. As far as I can tell, there is no, there's currently no open uh, issue explicitly tracking for Quake or HTTP3. These are different things, right? Obviously, HTTP3 to support the HTTP3 protocol that uses Quake in, uh, in, in below layers. However, Quake is actually, it's a standalone protocol that you can use regardless of HTTP, right? It doesn't have any of the blow that HTTP have, if you will, you know, the, the, the queue back compression headers uh, doesn't have all of that stuff. You just, you can use the idea of streams directly on quick without the uh, head of line blocking that we have on TCP. Selfishly, I am very interested in knowing when this is available. So I personally find it very valuable to have an issue. So this guy created an issue and he's linking all the actual work. And he's telling actually a story that I never heard before here. So the document quick was tracked in this particular issue. Then it was closed because they, they effectively implemented some experimental uh, experimental implementation back I believe in 2020 and then the inter the entire implementation was then removed due to lack of support of OpenSSL if you don't know Node.js uses OpenSSL as the uh, as effectively the back end for their crypto API you know We're, we've now moved uh, uh, to quick TLS fork of OpenSSL to avoid being blocked by OpenSSL approach to implementing quick. OpenSSL have been notorious of uh, slow, slowing down. And uh, I know there's a lot of, you know, uh, people moving away of OpenSSL. That's what I started to know this. Then a new quick implementation was created, obviously. And then obviously, to, in order to implement HTTP3, you need quick support. So uh, some people started donating here. Uh, not much, uh, ten dollars, seventy-five dollars, you know, fifty bucks here and there, twenty bucks. But then, what? When was that? <laughs> that was like seven a week ago. Resolve bot, you know, posted. Pim Terry, right, has contributed a thousand bucks to this issue, right, in order just to support HTTP three, you know, and obviously, quick, right. So. This tells me that there is demand for Node.js being uh, supporting the HTTP3 and the Quick protocol. 
you know another thing we didn't mention here is is uh, when we talk about http3 support we really talking about two pieces here we four pieces to be specific we're talking about node.js supporting being http3 server and node.js being an http3 client so it has the knowledge to connect to an http3 server right that these are two different things right you need to teach node.js to connect to http3 server because it's a different protocol at the end of the day right right and i'm talking deep down you as a user you will not feel the difference you will still call fetch or axios or whatever and it, it internally it will use http3 but it needs to know how to connect to new db and if the backend doesn't support quick it has to fall back to tcp all this logic needs to be written as a client side and also as a server side in case you want to listen right <laughs> and then you have to do a quick listener right and also a quick client so there is a lot of work there it's not easy job so as i mentioned at the beginning in the video uh, there is no particular i don't see a lot of people putting node.js front facing directly all the uh to to publicly you know listening on a public uh, uh, ip address and being publicly addressable by anyone in the internet that is generally i don't like to say bad idea it's just dangerous and if you while it's useful it's really dangerous because node.js can do so many things right it's not battle tested to be front facing the wild wild internet uh, people can do all sorts of things to exploit some of the vulnerabilities you Node.js. Know, it's relatively new in the arena especially if you wanted to put it as a reverse proxy or as a web server publicly accessible you can you know how the, the stuff you can do with Node.js. imagine just having someone exploiting that you know so you, that's why you put nginx in front of it you put ha proxy that just feature stripped that you can do only these kind of things you know it's just a reverse proxy you know uh, it's just it does only this these kind of jobs and and then you on the back end you have a, an isolated private network where your reverse proxy talks to this back end that is privately not accessible by the public internet and you can have a little bit of a level of security there right but it seems like if i would to make a guess you know let's assume this is not required for direct http3 support to i don't know have build a website or an api that requires a lot of concurrency right because let's let's be honest why would you need http3 you want uh, you want concurrency you are sending a lot of requests from the client at the same time to that server right Th this this has to be understood one client is sending a lot of requests you know uh, concurrently so http3 and http2 helps http3 is even better because it doesn't have the idea of tcp block it's, it's not being blocked by this the, the idea of tcp sequencing its own segments we don't we are doing the sequencing effectively at the higher level with quick and http3 so that we don't have this blocking between streams right so you can create a stream you can send a request you can create another stream send another request so it's it's more you know streamlined but what if you don't want to put uh, node.js in the front you want to put it in the back what kind of use cases now, one, one thing I can think of is you have a chatty backend for a reason. You, you're communicating between two pieces in your backend. The backend is Node.js, and the frontend is also part of this private backend that is sets deep into your backend, right? So just it's like some sort of a microservices architecture. It's just clients talking to each other. So this is useful. Yeah, I, th I, th I think HTTP3, and if you want to go lower, quick directly is useful for that. You know, I want to create one connection, you know, to my Node.js, and I want to pool it. I want to create a, some sort of a pooling where I have multiple clients, and I want each client to have a single stream. And instead of creating multiple TCP connections, 
you know, and use pooling this way. So it definitely saves on resources, if you think about it. And uh, well, this introduces a little bit of a CPU kick, you know, on your back end. I don't know how much, you know, the old compares to the trial and error and testing, really. That's why Netflix didn't move to Quick yet, if you notice, when we tested that last time, uh, we, we did, did the diff tool on Netflix. They, they didn't move to Quick because they don't have a reason to, you know? You only move when you actually see a block. Something's blocking you. And boy, you will be surprised how far that bar is, you know? It's just, it takes time. You know, we have a lot of stuff that we can optimize as engineers in our code, in our uh, services that runs, in our how in the language that we use to write these services. There's so much you can optimize. So the protocol is really the last thing that will slow you down. You know, it depends obviously in on the cost, right, of each request and the latencies. You know, if if if, if a request takes a uh, three millisecond and your protocol is slowing you down by seven or eight milliseconds then it's worth it but if you're back and it already takes i don't know 40 50 millisecond what's an additional one or two millisecond of the protocol fix the back end fix the services and then move there um i don't see a value of http3 and quick right especially when when it comes to pooling on the back end uh i do see a value if you decide to put it on node.js in the front end, in the edge, and have a lot of clients connecting to that, right? If you have a lot of consuming clients, uh, but I would, I would really think twice before putting Node.js no in the edge. It's just so scary because you, you can do so much with Node.js, and it's just not a good idea to put it there. So if it was exploited, it's bad, you know. <laughs> if if Nginx was exploited, then ah, it's really minimum the things you can call you know, with Nginx, cause damage. But uh, Node.js is not really battle-tested to be front-facing the world, you know? You have to put it between, behind them. Again, I might be wrong. This might change. Node.js will be really secure. Uh, I mean, every month we see the uh, notice with security notices and Node.js continue to fix security uh, vulnerabilities, you know, fix those. So yeah, maybe it will get better and better and people will be encouraged to put it in the front end, but I uh, I don't know about that yet. But I, I mean, guys, what do you personally think? Uh, what kind of use cases would you use, would you use Node.js, Quick, or HTTP3 for? I would love to hear your opinion, right? Uh, I kind of throw in one here where connection pooling on the back end might be useful. Instead of creating multiple connections, you create one, right, quick connection or HTTP3, and then create streams for each one, right? I still need to read your guys' comments and thoughts. What do you think about this? Uh, do you think this is a necessary change in the future or just, this is just a nice to have kind of a feature? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.